Today, let's show you 11 signs of certain deficiencies in your body. These are pretty common, and I think it's a good idea to be able to understand various things that go on in your body and what's really behind them from a nutritional standpoint. So the first one is excessive yawning, okay? Oh, man, like that. Now, it could be you're tired. It could be you're out of shape. But more likely, it is an iron deficiency. If you're low on iron, you can't make heme in your blood, and you're going to be a bit deficient in oxygen, and you're going to want to try to get more air. So either the person's not consuming enough iron from their diet because maybe they're a vegan, or the stomach acid in their stomach is not strong enough to be able to extract this iron from the meat that they eat. But typically, the best source of iron is in red meat. Now, this symptom also relates to the next one, which is air hunger, um, like you have difficulty breathing. A little different, but similar. This too is a situation where you're trying to get more oxygen, um, but usually the cause is because your body, or more specifically, your blood is too acidic, okay? Slightly too acidic. Normally, the blood should be slightly alkaline, and so if the pH goes down just a little bit too much, you're considered having something called acidosis. And that symptom usually comes from a B1 deficiency. So when you're deficient in B1, the little energy factories in your cells called the mitochondria uh, don't work that well. Because when you think about B1, think of it as like a spark plug to ignite the uh, oxygen fuel carburetor in your mitochondria, just like an engine. And so without that spark plug, we can't um, burn fuel and then things can kind of backed up and you start developing too much um, lactic acid and that produces a lack of oxygen. And all you need to do is take B1, but also realize the number one reason why people are deficient in B1 is that they're eating too many carbs and sugars. So the more carbs you eat, the more B1 you're going to need to deal with those carbs. Thus, we recommend going on keto. All right, the next symptom would be this little tetany, a little twitching. It could be on the eyelid or in the face or in the arm. What is that? That is just the opposite. Your blood is excessively alkaline, okay? And when your blood is excessively alkaline, um, you can't transport uh, calcium that well. So calcium starts building up on the nerves and they short circuit the nerve conductivity, creating kind of like a a twitching going on in the muscle itself. So we have this interference between the nerve and the muscle causing this tetany. And so whether this um, alkaline situation is causing it or just one of the symptoms of it, um, you don't really know based on just uh, tetany, but a simple remedy would be to take some apple cider vinegar to kind of acidify the body a bit and mobilize that calcium. Another remedy to actually increase more absorption of this calcium could be uh, to take just vitamin D. That could be the reason. But in this situation, calcium's kind of stuck in the body. So you can have symptoms of a calcium deficiency. It's not really a calcium deficiency. It's just kind of locked up. So we need to mobilize it by altering the pH as well as taking vitamin D. Another thing you can kind of identify certain deficiencies is looking at the stool. Now, if your stool is green, Typically, it's because you're not digesting your salad or your greens, and that chlorophyll is uh, showing up down in your stool. Now, yes, it's true that chlorophyll is fat soluble and you could be deficient in bile, but more than likely, it's not that that's causing it. It's usually associated with diarrhea and something going on in the gut, whether you have some type of malabsorption in the digestive system because maybe you had some damage or inflammation there. So if you find that as soon as you start increasing your vegetables, you, know, you get diarrhea and you have green stool, then you should probably just avoid vegetables for now and do the carnivore diet for a while because your system is not able to digest it. And it could be also related to a lack of friendly bacteria. Now, if the stool is yellowish or pale, uh, think lack of bile because you're having too much fat, especially if the stool floats. That means you need more bile. So you can take that as a supplement. Even though bile is not a nutrient, it is an essential thing to help you extract fats. Part of bile 
is something called bilirubin. It's it's like the um, byproduct of red blood cells that are damaged or broken that your body has to kind of deal with them. So it, then it turns into bilirubin, which uh, the Latin word for that is red, as in the color in your blood. But when it breaks down, it kind of goes through the blood and the urine, and then also in the bile ducts in the uh, bowel. And so when it oxidizes, there's certain type of chemical reactions that cause um, different coloring effects from this bilirubin. So this is why your urine is yellow, and this is why your stool should be brown. It's actually originally coming from that um, red-orange uh, pigment. But if the stool is light-colored or pale, that means, or yellow, that means that you're lacking bile. So there's something going on with the gallbladder. Another common symptom is achiness in your lower back or your hips or even the upper part of your legs. That is a classic vitamin D deficiency, okay? And I would take probably 10,000 IUs, and within probably 10, 15 minutes, you're gonna feel your back a lot better. A lack of vitamin D will also cause like bone pain. So if you press like on your sternum, right here, your breastbone, and it's sore, that's a good indication that you need more vitamin D. You can also press on your shins, the front part of your uh, lower leg bone, and if it's sore, chances are you need more vitamin D. Next uh, symptom would be cold intolerance. You cannot tolerate the cold. That is an iodine deficiency because um, it's a function of the thyroid. And as an extra little thing, if you can't tolerate heat, typically that could be also a B1 deficiency. And also sometimes this cold intolerance could be a B1 deficiency too, but more than likely it's going to be an iodine deficiency, which a lot of people are deficient in. All right, now what about a white tongue? That is candida overgrowth. In your colon, you have a lot of bacteria, like 99% bacteria, and then you have 1% um, other microorganisms like yeast, fungus, and also candida. And normally they exist uh, in a, a friendly state. But as soon as you stress these microorganisms out, usually by taking an antibiotic and you kill off the bacteria, but it doesn't kill off other things like yeast, then you eliminate the thing that keeps this candida in check. So now we get an overgrowth of candida, and at the same time, they become a bit unfriendly. So they create problems in your body, and they start to rob nutrition and create all sorts of issues. So you'll see this overgrowth of candida on your mouth. So the real cause is a deficiency of probiotics. So you just need to take a probiotic. But the other thing is that if you continue to eat sugar or any type of um, refined carbohydrate, you'll keep feeding them. So you have to give up sugar to kill them off because they only can live on sugar. They don't eat fats. They don't eat proteins. So as soon as you starve them, they go away. Let's say you had high LDL and low HDL. That is a classic vitamin B3 deficiency called niacin. If you were going to take this as a remedy, which by the way is a really potent um, regulator of cholesterol and triglycerides in LDL, and as well as to help regulate HDL, make sure you take the type of B3 that is the niacin, not the one that um, doesn't create a flush. You want the B3 that creates the flushing or else it won't work. All right, the next sign would be bloating or stomach pain or indigestion. That is a classic lack of acid in your stomach, and the remedy is betaine hydrochloride. That means that your stomach does not have enough acid to digest your food. All right, next symptom would be muscle weakness. That is a classic sodium deficiency. Okay, you need more salt. And last one is high blood pressure. And we can also include in there high pulse rate. If you have that, that means that you need more potassium. It's a potassium deficiency and sometimes a vitamin D deficiency. This is why sometimes when people take vitamin D, they may even end up with low blood pressure or a low pulse rate. Most people need vitamin D and it uh, helps to regulate the cardiovascular system very, very efficiently. So now that you understand how to read the body uh, a little bit better, if you haven't seen this very popular video on how to evaluate your liver based on your foot, I put that video right here.